Okay, well, as, as um, introduced, I'm Antonia Seymour. I'm the Chief Executive of IOP Publishing. Um, for those of you that don't know, IOP Publishing is a learned society publisher where all of the proceeds of the um, publishing business go back into the learned society. So we're effectively building communities, not just serving communities, which I believe makes us a force for good. Uh, we publish over 100 journals across the physical science disciplines, so not just in physics, but more broadly than that. And about half of those journals are um, published together with other learned societies. Um, and together with scientists, librarians, partner societies and funders, we've really embraced open science. Uh, we think it's part and parcel of our mission as a learned society publisher. So I'm going to talk to you today about our open access journey at IOPP, which began 25 years ago in 1998. And I'll bring you up to the present day. Um, and I'm going to talk about some of the major milestones in our open access development, which include the launch of open access journals, hybrid open access, some of the groundbreaking licensing, licensing agreements that we have in place with institutions and funders, how we've been flipping journals to open access. And I'd like to also talk a little bit about some of the wider open science initiatives that we've been hearing um, a little bit about around open data, et cetera, and how all of this comes together under our Open Horizons strategy. So, um, as I mentioned, in 1998, we launched our first open access journal, the New Journal of Physics. This was a collaboration between the Institute of Physics and the German Physical Society. And I have to say the journal was a little bit ahead of its time, um, and it's taken many years to actually become a, a profitable journal. Uh, I think it was um, early in the open access movement, and we've learned a lot along the way. It was actually a whole eight years before we then launched our next fully open access journal in environmental research in 2006. In 2011, we introduced an open access option in all of our research journals. Uh, this is what we would call hybrid open access, meaning that every researcher in our community had the choice to publish open access if they wanted to or if their funder required it. Uh, transformative agreements have been a, a, a major accelerator of open access for us. Um, we struck our first, what we called then, offsetting agreement with Austrian institutions in 2014. And Austria is now publishing more than 90% of their article output with IOPP on a gold open access basis. This was then followed by our first read and publish agreement in Germany in 2018. And as you can see on the right, by the end of 2023, we anticipate having over 900 global institutions participating in transformative agreements. And I'll talk more about why these transformative agreements are so effective in our OA strategy shortly. Um, IOP Publishing has always launched new journals ever since um, it was established. Uh, and we focused on launching those journals in, in new and exciting fields. But from 2017, we made the decision that every new journal that we launched needed to be fully open access because that was the model of the future. Um, our mission as an organization is to expand the world of physics and that means expanding our publishing portfolio into other physics related disciplines such as materials and environmental sciences. So we, we take the definition of physics and we've broadened it out very significantly. So we now have uh, 31 fully open access journals, soon to be 32, uh, which represents more than a third of our portfolio now being fully open access journals. And that's, as I say, a mixture of our own proprietary journals and also journals that we publish on behalf of, of other societies. Um, we have flipped 
several journals to open access, which obviously is the goal. Um, we want to transition the whole business to open access. So as soon as we uh, reach a certain tipping point, we're able to flip journals. Um, in 2020, we flipped our first and largest journal at the time, a journal called Materials Research Express, to fully open access. And then we've also helped our society partners to flip their journals. So this includes the American Astronomical Society journals, which all flipped in January 2022. The International Atomic Energy Agency uh, flipped their journal Nuclear Fusion to fully open access in January of this year. And now the Japan Society for Applied Physics, who work with us, will flip Applied Physics Express to open access in January 2024 and are considering the timing of flipping their other journal uh, in, a, in a future year. So all of these different activities and different methods um, have contributed to a very significant growth in open access articles um, for uh, IOP publishing. So you can see back in 2017, only 9% of our content was open access. Uh, to the end of August this year, I don't have the very latest data, but to the end of August, we're at 46% open access. And if you remember, Caroline uh, said at the beginning of the conference that the industry average is 35% old open access. So we're, we're pushing ahead of that industry average. This 46% doesn't include the 23,000 articles that we publish as conference proceeding articles, and those are all um, open access as well. So if you include those, then we're actually closer to 70% open access. And how does this break down by country? Well, here you can see the journal content that we publish from the UK, from Germany and the US. And in 2023, 20, uh, so in this year, we're up at between 80 and 90% open access output from, from Germany, UK and the US. China and India are much further behind at 15 to 25%. Um, and for us, Jap Japan is at over 30%. So again, going back to what Caroline said, this seems a little bit lower than uh, the average that she was citing at 50%. So that may be something to do with our disciplines. Um, it may be to do with the fact that we um, are early in our uh, development of transformation um, transformative agreements in, in Japan. But Japan does represent the largest contributor of non-transformative agreement OA articles in our program. Um, I wanted to use the opportunity to talk not just about open access, but the broader open science agenda. And in 2020, we launched this um, a concept of open physics, which was designed to highlight our open science efforts, which are not just about increasing access, but also increasing transparency and inclusivity across the physical sciences. So it's a combined program of publications, activities and, and policies. So as part of open physics in 2020, we introduced a new research data policy which requires IOPP authors to provide a data availability statement. Authors are encouraged to share their data, but not required to at this stage. We want them to share it via an established repository, not via supplementary material. And the reasons being that then if it's in the repository, it receives a unique and citable identifier. So it's fair, meaning findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable. However, if an author doesn't want to share their data, then they need to specify the reason for that. And that reason gets included in the published article. Um, authors obviously also have to make their data require uh, data available to support the editorial teams if they want to, to check the science or the, the, the concepts presented in the paper. Um, in 2021, we uh, innovated around our peer review process and we introduced both double anonymous peer review and transparent peer review. Having both might seem contradictory, but in fact, what this does is allow maximum objectivity during the review process through the blinding of the authors and the reviewers to each other. Um, and then maximum transparency after publication. So the 
the full peer review reports um, are published so that uh, readers can understand the process that the manuscript has been through. Uh, in 2022, we extended our APC waiver and discount policy to cover all of our hybrid journals, not just our fully open access journals. This actually makes us one of the most, uh, this actually makes it one of the most generous APC waiver and discount schemes out there, because as I say, it applies across our whole portfolio. And it also is applied automatically. So if you're um, from a country categorized as a low income country by the World Bank, then you receive a full waiver automatically on submission. If you're an author from a lower middle income country, then we charge a flat fee of £500 uh, instead of the full price APC. And that's about recognizing that the transition to open access is progressing at different speeds uh, across the globe. And we want to make the fee as clear and understandable and also as affordable as possible. Which brings me on to our new long-term strategy, which we implemented soon after I became CEO of IOP Publishing. We call it Open Horizons, and it's our path towards universal access of research. As you've heard me described when I, when I went over our history, we've been embracing open access for some time, but this new strategy sees us committing to open in a much bigger way. We want to be open first. That's the default uh, approach we want to take to our publishing. It's still evolution, not revolution, um, but we talk about it as evolution at pace. And that is going to require us to make more than just incremental investments and incre incremental progress. So it's a step change in our approach to open science. Uh, we think this is advantageous for us as an organization, and we think that we can be successful in an open future. Um, we have competitive advantages around our ownership. So because we're a not-for-profit, we can take the long-term view and we have more control over our financial destiny than the commercial publishers who obviously have to satisfy shareholder value along the way. Um, we've built up the reserves at the society uh, and we were planning for this for many, many years. So we're in a healthy position to be able to weather the transition from one business model to another. We're embedded in the scientific community. Um, that means that we're able to develop our um, a strategy in conversation and collaboration with the groups that are most central to its successful implementation. Uh, our size, I think, is an advantage as well. We're a medium-sized learned society publisher, um, and that means that we're small enough to be nimble, and yet we're big enough to be able to deliver um, and that, lear that learning society not-for-profit status sets us apart, as I've, as I've mentioned, and means that we can balance uh, research impact with financial results and remain true to the Institute of Physics founding charter. So this is how our strategy is rooted to our mission, vision and purpose. Um, and we have three pillars to the strategy that you can see at the bottom of the slide. And I'll just very briefly talk about each of those and just highlight uh, some of the efforts underway. So I mentioned transformative agreements earlier. These are absolutely key to encouraging greater take up of open access. It has been the fastest way for us to release articles from behind the paywall into the public in, um, uh, free environment. And um, the default starting position for our transformative agreement offers to institutions and to funders is to offer unlimited open access publishing in all of our journals, both hybrid open access and all our partner journals. The intention is to make it as simple as possible to agree to one of these deals um, and result in a significant uptake in OA publication by authors participating in those institutions. And you can see that um, whilst there's a uh, a, a large number of these within Europe. There are also a large number of these now in North America and increasingly all over the globe. Uh, we need to provide outstanding publishing services to researchers, that goes without saying, but in an open access environment, researchers become 
even more central to the process than they have been in the past. Whether paying directly through their funder or institution, they have so many choices of where to publish. And in an article econ economy, we really need to know our research community intimately to succeed. So we're investing in um, driving article growth, which is really important for future revenue security. And I'm, I, I don't think I have time to talk too much about um, the, the individual elements on this slide. So I will skip over our, our slide here in peer review, but I, uh, suffice to say that high quality peer review is the backbone of robust and trustworthy research. And we invest a lot into ensuring that we have a reliable and constructive peer review process. Um, I will also skip over this side very quickly, but part of our investment into high quality peer review that provides a, an excellent author experience is the work we're doing to reinvent our peer review and submission system, working with a partner called Maresia. Uh, we're gonna be developing an entirely new flexible system that can, can create efficiencies for both our authors and reviewers, but also for us. And I will I will dwell on this slide because obviously in a, an environment where we're looking to grow our publishing output, it's very important that we also invest in continuing to provide that quality assurance. And there's never been uh, a, a higher level of danger in our sector around research integrity breaches, whether those be paper mills or plagiarism or AI tools allowing easier Im image manipulation, et cetera. So our, our team has grown significantly over the last three, three or four years. Um, and we are working very closely with the STM, uh, uh, supporting the work they're doing to develop this um, integrity hub, which I think will be a game changer for us as we collaborate across the publishing industry to try and ensure we keep bad actors out of the scholarly ecosystem. Um, my second to last slide, uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the multi-year, multi-million pound series of investments that we're needing to make to deliver that Open Horizons um, strategy, uh, which is largely around improving the discoverability and impact of research through a number of big initiatives that you can see simplified here on this slide. So in order to drive um, customer engagement, customer awareness, satisfaction, and that increased loyalty. We are investing in um, our CRM platform, which is about implementing a, a 360 degree single view of our customers so that we can join up data across our sales, editorial, and marketing um, functions so that we can tailor our communications and get better insights into what our authors, reviewers, editorial board members, librarians, partners, et cetera, want and need. The submission and peer review platform is being replaced as I, as I mentioned before. And we're also investing heavily in the software required to simplify open access management, which needs to accommodate both single APC payments and also the consolidated funding that we have through the transformative agreements. And certainly last but not least on the far right, we have um, a strategy around our content discovery and dissemination. So some of you may be familiar with our platform IOP Science. That is not the only place where researchers uh, discover our content. In fact, it's um, probably one of the less important places where people discover our content and particularly in an open access world where that content can be made freely available anywhere for anyone to use. We need to really focus on our dissemination capabilities and our discovery capabilities of making sure that we can surface our research content wherever researchers are looking for it. So that might be on ResearchGate, it might be on academia.edu, it might be in the workflow of a researcher's lab. So um, a lot of work going into, into that aspect. And then underpinning all of this is improving the quality of our data. So data is the, the lifeblood that runs through all of our systems and that data needs to be accurate, reliable and up to date. 
so that we can make those evidence-based decisions and, and move from what I call hindsight to foresight and hopefully then um, be able to serve those customers better in the future. So in summary then, uh, the outcome of our new Open Horizon strategy will be a healthy but lower margin future business um, targeting the delivery of a sustainable level of annual profit to the Institute so that they can do all the wonderful things that they do to support physics. Um, so the financial profile of the publishing business is going to be much bumpier in the future as the stability has gone as we migrate business models. The profit um, or the gift aid that we um, pay back to the Institute will be much lower than in the past. Uh, and that's because it's requiring significant investment for us to navigate this change in a sustainable way. And that's the investment I talked about into people, into data and into technology to support that article growth. But I'm super excited about this. And I firmly believe that we're uniquely placed to be successful. Um, and that move to open science reinforces our core purpose as a learned society which of course is the advancement and dissemination of knowledge and education.